before I forget, thank you very much for all the comments I got so far in the videos. I read all of them. And uh, for sure, I'm super happy to see that people are actually trying things. They are actually mm, getting help from the, the videos, which is exactly the aim, at least for myself. Having subscribers and likes and comments, it's good. But uh, when I see someone working on those videos and, and they, they say, hey, it helped me a lot. Thank you very much. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I thought that before the next video starts, I wanted to give you a little bit of an explanation about what happened during the last year, because my last edition was like January-ish about snorkeling. Um, yeah, so basically my partner and I purchased the house uh, back in April and it was a fixer-upper, needed a lot of work. After a couple of months, we figured out that this is not going to go well together. So we decided to take different paths in life. Um, and then, yeah, I didn't really have the energy to continue because the, the working house was still <laughs> huge and I was not really having a good time. So I decided to really focus on myself and try to uh, do things one by one so I could make some progress somewhere. But I am back. Um, I'm super excited because I, not a very long ago, I said, okay, it would be very nice to come back to the projects, the personal projects, these things that actually make me grow a lot. Um, and also make some publications in YouTube for you guys. Of course, what I publish, it's very little, but at least it helps. Um, so what's the plan from now on? <sighs> well, you're going to see uh, that the Volkswagen Polo is still there. It's working fine. It's amazing how it works, the engine at least, from a diesel rattling engine to a benzene engine working rather, rather fine. Um, there's a lot of work done in that little <laughs> car seat. Um, and I'm super happy with it. And it would be nice to finish it. So for me, that's going to be the main focus right now. On the back burner, I have the Seat Leon Cupra. <coughs> and I think in that uh, platform, what I'm planning to do is to get in, to get it a little bit more reliable. So I can actually uh, perform some fun days in the track or just go to Nürburgring. It would be amazing. Also with the Polo, I would love to take it. Eh? Just to say, hey, good. You are good and reliable again. That's it. New owner. Um, of course, there are many other interests, but so far right now, I, I have a few issues, uh, not issues, a few topics that are taking a lot of uh, time from my side. Work is very demanding, even though I just changed positions, but I don't know, it's, it's really demanding. And I end up super tired without really energy to do anything. Um, also, uh, I'm also uh, with a new partner. I'm super happy and it requires a lot of time also. So I, I need to balance there. Plus, <clears throat> the house still needs a lot of work. I didn't have a good experiences with the people so far. I had a lot of hiccups. And yeah, I'm, I'm trying to manage as much as I can, but also trying to delegate to people that can actually do things, but within certain boundaries, because otherwise I end up doing what the other people do, plus I pay. So it doesn't make sense. At least this is the experience here so far. But where is going? There is progress. Good. Um, so the future here, my intention for, for, for the uh, short term is to publish at least one video per month, ideally two. And uh, no worries, there's a lot of content about the Volkswagen Polo coming. Like, you're gonna get bored about it. I already did the Cupra injector and in, uh, a detailed video about the injector cleaning. <coughs> and of course, all the mods that are up to come. But yeah, I cannot say exactly when I am going to do this. And I have a lot of ideas in mind, but bit by bit. And also I would like to add in the Cupra side because uh, the, the Polo is nice, it's it's a nice car, but I'm doing restoration mainly, and it's really nice. Uh, you Something that's not working ends up working and it looks nice, beautiful. 
but I'm coming from a research background. So I'm missing the part that, you know, opening the path, like say, hey, I want to do this. How do I do this? How do I design tool for this? How, how can I make it better? You know, um, the Polo is not a car for doing that. The Cupra is. So probably I will turn the BDs in the Cupra for maintenance and also for some optimization, let's say weight reduction, and also trying to give some background, give some, give some uh, technical knowledge about it. Like why is this happening and how can we get to certain stage? I don't know, I'm thinking about a little bit of reverse engineering using some software. Uh, a little bit of programming uh, with uh, some uh, accelerometers to measure vibrations in the car. Or uh, uh, let's think about a clever way of weight reduction in the car, not just uh, removing the seats, which doesn't make sense. So these kind of things. I would like to challenge myself a little bit and grow also, and maybe probably uh, make you grow too. So enough of talking, enjoy the video and see you soon. Having finished with the oil sump and the suction pipe, now I would like to clean all the surroundings of the engine right below where the mating surface is going to happen later. I would like to avoid any possible contamination, let's say. So, for that, I thought it would be very nice if I also take care of this exhaust manifold. So, I am going to remove it. Uh, you have copper uh, self-locking nuts here one two three four and then below another four just be patient because this is always very warm and yeah i will also re uh, renew the studs and the gasket as you can see i don't know if you can see properly but here is all black ish this is the exhaust fumes and here leaking from the exhaust gasket so let's see what we find out Plus, from below, we have this bolt here that I already removed and this connector here from the first lamp sensor that goes right there. Well, not that bad, huh? The lambda sensor is here. I think this is fairly new. The catalytic converter looks in a good condition, although I think we will need to, we will need to clean it a little bit because it looks like there is a lot of carbon buildup here. Funny. Gasket is going to be replaced. Bolts can, are going to be replaced and the studs that go here will be replaced. Now, now, let's try to remove the studs, but first let's take a look on the engine side. Cylinder number one, number two, number three, and number four. Here, you can notice there is a burr, and I think that's the reason why we got our leak. Other than that, I think it's a car from 22 years old. So let's give it a nice mm. clean. This is my methodology in order to remove the studs that are embedded in the block. So with the old bolts, just be careful not to use uh, an adjustable spanner, just the one that it goes, like number 12 here. So what I do is just uh, try to reach the end of the stud and then uh, try to have the right tightness between these two bolts, otherwise they will slide together. So now here, just place it in this bolt because it's the one you wanna remove. And there you go, everything goes. Sometime later, everything is ready. I think I'm going to keep these studs because I will brush them, the tips, and I will re-blue them. And that's it, you have a nest, uh, another set, or maybe I just put them back in. The reason why I'm doing this basically is because I bought a set with a gasket for the catalytic converter. Uh, and yeah, the studs were already included. That's why I'm removing them, because otherwise I would have just left them there. I think I can salvage this uh, downpipe. It's not in the best condition here, but I can just sand it down. Uh, it should be okay here on the interfaces. The problem is right here. Everything is badly welded and I believe I can remove the clamp, cut the interface properly, just grind it down, prepare the interface and of course I'm not gonna use this guy. But let's start with this and let's see what are we able to do. Turns out that I got real lucky here. Uh, the clamp was the right one, but I don't know why they did this. Maybe it cracked or something. 
well, this was not in a very good condition, as you can see, <laughs> and the screws are gone. So, all recycling. Now, here, I'm gonna clean this interface. I don't know what I'm doing here, I don't have a welding machine, but I think I could leave this rather nicer than this. And I'm gonna clean this interface. Time to remove this beautiful and good looking silencer. I must say, the end pipe looks very nice with this. Wow. It's, it's, I think some kind of coating that is gone. Whatever is below looks, wow. We have a bracket here that we need to remove. And these rubber dumpers, they are all super brittle. And I will uh, show you more in detail whenever I take them out. And then we have another one. That is, that is right there. You can see the bolts. This one looks quite nice. However, this one, uh, I'm a bit concerned because you have one side of the bracket that you see there is connected to the damper itself. But whatever is behind looks really rusty. So I may need to prepare and somehow paint and protect these surfaces. Well, I don't know. Let's go ahead. You can clearly see the mess. There. And there. Now, these are custom made from a tamper, the one on the right hand side. And bolts, of course, different bolts or rusty and so on. Now, what's the situation down there? Well, these brackets are a bit rusty. I need to prepare them. Probably, uh, yeah, add some primer and paint them because they are in a close to very bad condition. Only problem is what I don't see from here, I'll do my best. And then these two brackets, they are all good. We can see here is the uh, brake, the rear brake distributor. This one has been completely <laughs> tinkered, I guess. There are some lines which are new. You can see on the right hand side with the copper color code. Uh, other lines have been repainted, I think after uh, the accident it had. And then here there was a cable tie, and now it's pretty hard to make this all all this reach the position. I think it's because they tight they tightened this bolt to an extreme. Plus, this is not the original bolt that goes here. So I'll see what I can do. I guess this looks super dodgy, and this needs to, I think, swing with the rear axle. I would like to have a word about what's the process I follow in order to paint these two parts because I follow two different processes or I use two different types of paint. So the first one, uh, you remember the first, uh, the condition of, especially of this bracket was all rusty. Uh, an option is to go for some blasting, perfect. That, that's the ideal way to go, easy and quick. Anyway, what I decided to go is for uh, proper abrasion. Uh, which it will happen anyway, with the, depending on this uh, blasting media and also uh, any other methods. So with the help of an angle grinder, I purchased these two uh, wire brushes. This one is like smooth and this one is brutal. So very good. However, in order to reach tiny gaps like here, all of these, you see, I removed a lot of material. What I did is I used my Dremel with these bits. You can buy them in AliExpress, they are very cheap and very, very useful. After that, you will proceed with a proper cleaning of the part, or if there is some uh, surface rust, you can use rust remover. And then wash the part, wait for it to dry, and probably you will need to go again with a smooth brushing in order to remove some surface rust. Then you activate the surface with alcohol. Well, isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. And then, here's the trick. <laughs> um, I decided, I purchased these two uh, base coats, let's say. One is a rust primer and the other one is edge primer, especially for cars, it's 1K primer. But if I go on the rear side, you can see that one has a harness 
level of four and the other one is three. Whereas the three is the etching prime. Well, I'm just testing both of them. Then, for this bracket, I use auto acrylic uh, for uh, this is just black mat three layers just follow the instructions of this uh, supplier and then for the other one for this bracket because this is right below or the exhaust is right above this bracket you might see some heat therefore I decided to go for this one which is special for barbecues heat resistance 16 degrees and it's for it's level 4 also the same happens here and one of the things you need to do is for this one you need to activate the paint or or let's say uh, in order for the paint to reach the right hardness you need to place it in the oven for one hour at 200 degrees and so far it's been wonderful finally i decided to go for a clear coat uh, matte lacquer for this bracket not for this one i don't think uh, the 600 degrees uh, paint will withstand it and also if this reaches more than 200 degrees the, the lacquer will just disappear one of the questions i had is if i place in a should the rust primer or the edge primer have any uh, resistance to heat is it going to hold well together when i uh, place it in the oven well it did perfectly by the way New exhaust manifold gasket, new dump pipe gasket, and old studs, bolts, and washers needed. How do we do this? We take a stud, the short side goes into the engine block, a bit of copper grease, whoop, like this. Let's remove the excess, clean everything. Now we insert a bolt. Not all the way through, just midway. Okay, this is the way it has been working for me. Now we take, I feel comfortable with this uh, Allen key and ratchet on the other side. This side. Now let's go to the engine block. Let's place, put some light here. Let's say I want to do this one here. Uh huh. I would start always from below and then above, otherwise it's going to be a pain in the ass. This one goes, is going in. Oops. Let's see if this one can... Okay. Now, sometimes you may have... Uh, you may see these two bolts going like in tandem. Now, let me see if I manage here. Yep. That's it. This one is going in very well. There is no torque requirement. So this one is just, just snug fit, I guess. And the copper grease is to avoid sizing or gulling. gulling. I think that's okay. Now, this ball should come out easily. That's it. And the one behind. I think it's a good time to place the new oil filter in since we have a lot of room to work. Time to place the collector. Each of the bolts needs to reach 25 newton meters. Gasket in. And we're gonna also have to place this bracket and the torque specification for this bolt and the one that goes into the engine block is 40 newton meters. So let's go ahead. And these are the washers and nuts I'm using uh, in the set from left to right. What I, what I got is the copper nut and the galvanized washer. However, I am going to place the stainless steel washer instead, which is the left one, just to prevent corrosion. That's it. And this is how it looks like. Well, tips and tricks. Always start reaching the door requirements from the center to the sides for up and down. And then, I don't know if you can see that bolt there because there's a bracket and another bolt that heal, uh, holds the cut in place. I would always place the bracket last, uh, as the, in the last place. Why? Because the most important bit is to have a very, very, very good joint be 
between these two interfaces. Then the rest is just mechanical uh, in terms of uh, for vibrations of to keep everything in place while the engine is running. Also, what we did because my dad is helping me, uh, I placed this bracket back and we also insulated this connector for the oil pressure sensor and don't forget to connect the lambda sensor from the first catalytic converter. Now we need to cover everything nicely and finish the air intake and the heat reflector is back and I changed the screws they are stainless steel with washers I know they are non -lose the, the other ones were non-losable these ones are super losable but again we are trying to fight against corrosion and I think it's a very good choice now that everything is ready it's time to continue by placing the exhaust line back but first we need to prepare all the interfaces and clean them and de-rust them so let's go and start with the rear muffler which is the for me i think in my opinion is the worst one And for the exhaust system, I bought a kit from HJS. I think it's a very common brand. Uh, it includes uh, the damper for the catalytic converter and also the connection from the catalytic converter, well, the second catalytic converter and the middle uh, damper, uh, and the mid silencer, sorry, and then screw, then this is for the end silencer and these two are for the mid and end silencers with the screws. I believe everything is um, galvanized, but I think I'm gonna do the following. Yes, I will be using the original damper. I think it's much better material. I think it's beaten and the other one is EBDM. And then screws are all stainless steel where possible. I couldn't find the brackets, but why I, I really bought this set because of these two dampers here. I think you can also buy these two dampers only, but anyway, I need to trim the screws. Plus I am missing two more dampers for the catalytic converter. Well, just one more thing I forgot all these nuts for the rest of the brackets um, they are also they have rubber so i don't just in case they are non-losable here there's a little bit of rust build up and here i'm not gonna treat it just add some uh, rust remover and just keep it like that for now i don't think it's a major thing same story for the catalytic converter. Uh, I will be ordering one because the flex pipe is completely out and here I think inside the mesh is loosened. Um, and here I don't really like this, I don't know. I know whatever paint or base coat I will apply will get super hot and it will delaminate. So I think the way to go is to order one, but for now I think it will work. And for the, uh, inspection, uh, for the technical inspection it's gonna be just fine. Rear mount in. It is supposed to be 20 newton meters plus 90 degrees. And I'm pretty sure these two brackets are some DIY solution. <laughs> Second rear silencer rubber mount in. Same shit situation here. Now it's time to add our beloved end silencer. Uh, don't forget to add the here and there some grease so you will make the sliding through the dampers a bit more friendly. I will use some silicone grease. Looking nice. And waiting for further adjustment. Now, don't forget to add the clamp. Now we will go with this one, but we need to apply some sealing compound first. Now we'll place this uh, assembly paste or this sealing paste here. The surface must be uh, free of grease, of course, and clean, which is already there. And this is the plate that we need to install. I will take these four nuts, 15 Newton meters. There is supposed to be a heat shield that somehow disappeared. I guess it got super rusty and they removed it. And of course, a rubber mount that will go here. I will apply some grease later 
and put it on here and here. Let's start with the paste and inserting the exhaust line back where it should be. Assembly paste applied. I don't know what the gap is. I just try to be very generous and somehow homogeneous around this height, which is was marked from the previous exhaust. Things like a bit more than five centimeters. Let's see how it goes. Let's uh, assemble it. And this is how much paste came out from uh, the joint. We will remove the excess in a while. So bear in mind that you need to play way less than I did. Now it's time for the dumper. And this is how it looks like. I applied some copper grease to the threads just to prevent galling or sizing. Um, placing the dumper was super easy. And the torque specification here is 15 Newton meters, but don't do it just yet. First, we need to uh, place the second catalytic converter, and then we will adjust this joint and the other one, and then the brackets. Time to place the second bracket. For the catalytic converter, this degrees the uh, mating surface. Whenever you place this catalytic converter, the other part should lay between the SA zones then what I would recommend is add some grease here and here for the dumpers and on the engine side then place the dumpers on the engine side because this is a heavy bastard we need to leave it resting while we bolt on the gasket and the screws there so that's going to be the plan I'm gonna add the paste applying lessons learned then align it with the other, uh, with the mid silencer. Hold it very quickly in these two dampers and start with the bolting of that side and then start adjusting, fine tuning everything from this side to the end of the exhaust line. Now there is partial in, you can see it there. And also here, I'm gonna take my time and adjust the Lambda probe 15 Newton meters, I don't have the tool, so I will just give it a snack fit. Don't forget about your copper grease, but don't apply a lot because if it reaches the Lando probe, you are done. All right, in the end, you can see there all the mess I made. I had to, yeah, add more length to the whole exhaust system. Still, it's still good. If I remove this clamp, the, the steel pipe just reaches this side and even a, a, far, a bit further. But I decided to cover this um, gap here. But first, bracket in. Something that I have noticed is that there is almost no clearance here, and there is a lot of clearance here. So now, if I step into a very big bump, I will have a problem. But if I keep going out on this side, I will have a problem too, because I will not have enough mating surface right here. So I think I will leave. I will need to leave with this. That's, that's the price of you pay for third-party components, I guess. I'll see what I can do. Let's go to the exhaust manifold. Now that it's all placed in, it's still not yet torqued to the specifications. But now I think I will start with some fine-tuning because I think I have some volume conflicts right there. It looks like the mid silencer is a bit too short for this car, anyway. Now on this side is the same situation. However, I still get the same issue with clearance. I can place my hand here, but almost not here. But it all goes well. If I try to move it, what you're hearing, what you're hearing is the clamps that are not adjusted just yet. Um, yeah, in the end, I think I'm gonna leave it this way. Um, I know it's not perfect, but for now I think it should work. Um, so, first 40 Newton meters on the exhaust manifold side, and then from there, then uh, factory, factory wise, this one should be at 40 Newton meters too. The screws at 15 Newton meters here, and so on. Let me finish. There you go. This one. This one and the other two. I think now I will, I will disconnect the coil and the fuel pump and we will try to pump some oil into the circuit. It's been too long without any oil. Well, it's been too long draining the oil. Coil 
disconnected. Fuel pump disconnected. I know I can disconnect the fuse, but it's so confusing the, the diagram that I will need more time for that. Battery is connected. Two. I'm gonna connect everything. Coil distributor is connected. Fuel pump is connected, and I know it looks super filthy down there. Moment of truth. You can hear that almost <laughs> super long. <laughs> Jesus, what a fuel pump! There you go. Go to the engine, it sounds really nice. switch off the engine and wait for a couple minutes and then top up oil and whenever the car is I will switch on then I will switch on the engine again wait for another 10 minutes switch it off and whenever the car is cold I will try to fix that leak but success well the oil level is up to maximum so that's good 3.2 liters was enough I definitely need to replace the catalytic converter. I don't know if you hear the boom 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 Yeah, it's wide open here. So, just a couple days later, yeah, new catalytic converter. Uh, it came with a gasket and also with a clamping, but I'm gonna use this one. Uh, it's all uh, by BM Catalysts. Um, I bought it, it's not sponsored or whatever and then uh, it's good for my car AUA, Polo, 1.4, 16 valve hatchback all good but you can also go for all of these ones Lupo, Seat Arosa, it's the same engine basically um, same uh, the most important thing in the European Union it's homologated, it's certified so things about this one compared to the other one well, the other one was 6.2 kilos this one is 3.6 kilos. There is quite a bit of a difference. Then there is a funny smooth section change here. I don't know if this was done on purpose. And the other one didn't have things like that. And this one looks like a, like a much simpler build. I don't know how, go how long is it going to last because the other one was, uh, you can see it's thicker uh, in terms of wall thickness and, and also it's it's old school made it's 
it sounds better, you know, but way heavier. And I don't know if this one will be better in terms of uh, back pressure or flow. I have no clue. Uh, I don't know how well this will do in the car or not. Uh, but it's it's the way to go. Certified is good. And if I go to the dealer, they'll probably rip me off with a thousand euro catalytic converter for a car from 22 years old. And I pay well less for the car. It doesn't make sense. Um, it's rather well built. I actually like it. Very good welds and simple. The section, the cross section of the pipe is the same. And it doesn't have as many transitions as the other one. It's just a flex pipe because you really need it. And it's where the other one had the, the big hole. And then the catalytic conver converter right there. I will remove the uh, paper in a second. Um, I think it has also a heat deflector. Yeah, you can see. It's. I think it's well made. Let's put it in the car and test it. This is for a 12 millimeter external diameter copper pipe. And this is an end plug, so you want to block the flow in a certain direction. You or you cut the pipe, you can place this and you can still use the circuit. And it is an M18 and the uh, pitch between thread is 1.5 millimeters, which is exactly what you need for your lambda sensor. Okay, now you tell me, oh, this is perfect. It's I think it's a couple euros, no more, but there is no way I can place here a washer there's no way i can really grab here and, and create some kind of leak tight point the solution looks very nice and it's even brass so it's compatible material wise and yeah but for now i think i will leave it this way okay we do have some advice in this sticker i just removed which is um if you're replacing the catalytic converter because you identified a failure it's nice that you verify that the problem was the catalytic converter, otherwise the failure might be there. The second one is that uh, exhaust paste cannot be used before the catalytic converter because it may it may uh, ruin the, the mesh that is inside. I'm gonna just show you the mesh, it looks very nice. And also we need to replace the lambda sensor, and but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it because there is no problem. It's just a hole in one of the pipes, so the problems identified. The lambda sensor just worked perfectly. I think it's more like a preventive me me measurement. And then we need to keep the car idling for 10 minutes or go for a very a mild drive if we, we, if we would like to uh, enlarge or increase the life expectancy of this catalytic converter. And that's the mesh. Beautiful, huh? So this time I decided to apply a different methodology for the mating of these two pipes. Uh, the assembly paste says I just take the mating surfaces and apply the paste vigorously and then go for the mating. Well, the paste was drying super quickly and I think there was no connection whatsoever last time. Uh, in this one, which is this one is the down pipe and this one is the mid silencer. It was good, but in the other, in the other one... <laughs> Mid silencer and silencer was not really good. What I did now is just I assembled the two sections and then I applied the paste. I had to make a little bit of pressure from this side so that I, I ensure that the paste goes at least towards like a for, for a centimeter, it, it, it really seals. I don't know if you want it to go through the whole length or just a little bit. I'm just testing. Um, it's much nicer. Look at that. Super clean, it looks neat, and I think it should work. And what happened here? Well, first of all, don't use stainless steel unless it's complying with uh, certain standards. I assume this one will comply with the standards and I bought them and I know they are from Germany. Anyway, maybe the application is not the right one. So what happened here is that when I apply 40 Newton meters, the bolt stretched a lot and then the pitch between the threads also got enlarged therefore I couldn't remove the the bolt what happened probably that yeah we ended up going over the fillets or there was some gulling or sizing and I ended up breaking well the screws because of too much twisting 
So the recommendation is to use uh, the ones that came with the kit. Uh, what I'm going to do is place a, a nut that I know will comply with regulations. Um, the uh, washer made of stainless steel and the rest I will just use the one that came with the kit because I don't have a replacement for these two and I'm not willing to try again. And voila! And the new catalytic converter. Let's test it. Before I start the engine, I bet there will be one leak. Uh, we know where, right? So I need to wait till that plug for the um, lambda sensor comes, and that's it. Or if I find a way around. But let's test it. Oh. And that, ladies and gentlemen, this is me forgetting to tighten the bolts between the exhaust manifold and our new catalytic converter. Test number two. Wow, <laughs> what a difference. <laughs> I'm clearly having an issue. And there is a lot of smoke coming from the engine. Let's switch it off. Result is that it says that the barometric pressure sensor is failing. Uh, I just found this completely loosened here. And this little duct also, it goes to the manifold. I mean, it makes sense. Let me see. I wanna take the sensor, which is right there clean it and also place a new one here if i have it just clean the sensor i i think this is a pressure a map sensor uh it looks rather clean anyway so all right i just applied a quick fix here uh using a tube i had for a compressor just let's leave it there for the time being and i am going to switch on the engine uh, the intake is okay i want to leave this like this and see what what's going on here It looks like no issues. The smoke is because of the catalytic converter. It's changing color. You can see it right there. I'm gonna switch it off. Take a look. Well, that's the solution for now. I managed to cut the tube a little bit. There is not a crazy bend here, so it should work for now. Till the moment I find a substitute. the M18 bolt that needs to go in the catalytic converter and there it is I will just proceed with a smack fit whenever the catalytic converter is warm enough so I will ensure this bolt is not gonna come out it sounds really nice so listen now and before <laughs> 